Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today I was thinking of doing something a bit different. Besides recording RL Craft, I was thinking since I was going to do it anyway. So I was about to set up a new private Minecraft server for myself and I was wondering, wait, that would be a good YouTube video. Oh, you're right. Oh, yeah, I am right. So here we are. So this video will be about how to set up your very own Minecraft Forge server with our friends, Bicycle Hosting. If you haven't heard of Pirates Hosting, they're a great company that helps you host servers in locations all over the world. So Pirates Hosting has two tiers of servers. You get budget tier and you get your premium tier. But I usually go budget tier because I can't afford premium because they're very expensive and I don't have money. So assuming you really have a Pirates Hosting server, let's get on with the video. So if you really have a Minecraft server with Pirates Hosting, this page will look very familiar. But this is just a data page for the server you own. Usually it'll be loaded with the latest Minecraft version, in this case 1.6.5. But we don't want that. We want our very own Forge Minecraft server. So to begin setting up your Pirates Hosting server with Forge, you're going to need to download the latest version. So on Google, you can type in Forge. Usually the site is right on top of the page, so we'll just select that. So once your page is reloaded, make sure to navigate to the download latest block and then click on the installer button so once you've clicked it'll navigate you to this this weird looking page to turn off um, but if you look on the top right corner you'll see please wait for a number of seconds after the uh, button appears you click on skip so most of the time they'll ask you to keep or discard the file but in this case we're going to keep it because we know that this file is safe so let's just wait for it to download so once you have your Minecraft Forge version downloaded, click on the downloaded item. So after you've clicked on the Forge download, this new window will pop up. So this window is just to install your Forge server. So we don't want to install client, we want to install a server. So, so once you select the install server button, your directory box will turn red, as you can see here. So this is just telling you that you should probably redirect it to another directory because this is actually the path to your Minecraft install. So they're just asking you to choose another directory so that it can install usually into an empty folder. So let's, let's actually select a new folder. So we want to create a new folder for our server files to generate it. So we will then click the new folder button. We'll then name this Minecraft server. And then once you've created the new folder, you'll select the folder and then you'll click on open. So we'll be installing the Minecraft server into the new folder that we've created. So once everything is checked here, we'll then press OK. And then we just wait for the server file to be downloaded. So once the server files are finished downloading, you will then click OK. And then we will navigate to the folder that we've created. So once you got the Forge server files downloaded, we will just need to change one of the files name just to make it easier for us when we go back to Bicycle Hosting. So what we will do is we'll just change our Forge, our Forge jar to be custom.jar. And then that's it for the server file. So what we will do next is moving these files onto our Biosite Hosting Minecraft server. So back to the Biosite Hosting server homepage, we will now move the files from our local PC onto our Biosite Hosting Minecraft server. So to do that, we'll just need to go to File Manager. So on the file manager page, this is where you will see all your server files for your Minecraft server. So as you can see, there's one file on my server at the moment, but we want this file directory to be completely empty so that we can move over the new files onto our Minecraft server. So what we have to do is we can click on all. So if there are more files on your server, it will select all of them. So we'll click all and then we'll click delete. It will ask you for some verification and you will just continue to delete all. So once your server has no files on it, we can now move over the files from our PC onto the Bicycle Hosting server. Before moving the files onto the server, what we have to do is we're going to have to compress all these files into one file. So using any compression tool that you have installed, we will select all of the files. We'll then right click. I use 7-Zip for my compression, so I would go to 7-Zip. I would then add to Minecraft server zip. This is just this is just to make it easy to transfer the files from our local PC onto the Bicycle Hosting server. So once you have your compressed zip file, you will then move the zip file onto the file manager page. So as you can see, a nice window popped up to show us how far our progress is for the upload. So once the upload has been completed and our files are on the Bicycle Hosting server, you'll notice that the zip file is still compressed. So we don't want this. We actually want the files that we had before the zip 
to be in our Minecraft server directory. So what we will do, so what we'll do, we'll then select, we'll select the zip file and we'll go to the more option and we can actually unarchive. So once we've unarchived the zip file, we will see that all the folders that we had before zipping will actually be in the server directory. So from here on out, we're, we're technically done. So just for some cleanup purposes, we will select the zip we uploaded and we'll then click delete because we don't need the zip file anymore. So once we've done everything on the file manager page, please take note of the custom jar that we renamed. This will be very important for this next step. So we will then go back to home. So on the home page, you'll see that it still says minecraft underscore server dot 1.16.5 dot jar. So this is not what we want. We actually want to rename this to the custom dot jar that we've got from the minecraft server file. So all we have to do is just rename this to custom.jar. So this will make sure that when the server starts, it will actually grab that custom.jar file and it will generate the server files according to the forge server file. So once you change the name to custom.jar, just remember to save that new name. So once we've done all of that, we can now start up our Minecraft server. What I prefer to do is instead of starting it on the home page, I like to go to console. In the console, you can see how your files are generated when starting up your server. This is why I kind of prefer doing it here. So once we're on this page, we can click on start and then the server will just start creating itself. You'll see some warning messages, but that's nothing to worry about. So as you can see, the server was created without any issues. So now you probably think, what's the point of having a forge server without any mods on it? Well, we're getting to that point. So if you go back to the file manager page, you'll see that there are way more files than we saw in your last time. So this is just because all the files were generated and whatnot. So if you don't know how to install mods onto your server, it's actually quite simple. So all you have to do is go to the mods folder. So when you go to the mods folder, you'll notice that it's empty. That's because there aren't any mods on the server at all. We just installed Forge onto the server. So let me go grab a mod real quick. This is the create mod. So the create mod is technically a mod that automates a lot of things in Minecraft, making automatic farms, making automatic bread. You can make elevators, you can make moving doors. You can make elevators, you can make moving doors. This mod is just, it just has everything in it. And it's really a mod that I would recommend. So to download the mod, you'll scroll down to the recent file section. And there you would pick the file with your appropriate server version so our version is 1.16.3405 so we can actually download this it will redirect you to another page and then once the time is over it will download and yeah so once you have your mod downloaded all we're going to have to do next is drag the .jar file into our mods folder once it's uploaded you'll see the file on our directory which is exactly what we want so back to the console, we will need to stop the server and once it has stopped, we just start it up again. So once we've done all of that, we will then grab the IP for the server and launch up Minecraft. So just before you start up Minecraft on your PC, just remember to have the 1.16.5 Forge version installed on your client as well as have the mods that you've put on your server into your mods folder on your PC as well. So when Minecraft comes up, we will then go to multiplayer and then add our new server. So let's join the server and see what happens. And there you go. That's how you set up a Minecraft Forge server with Bisect hosting. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys learned from the video. If you didn't, I want my money back. So anyway, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, if you liked and enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you all again. See ya.